So welcome Iskra to my uh, interview series. Um and I uh, I, invited, I invited you because uh, yeah, I believe you're a very ambitious uh, person, very uh, yeah, focused on uh, not just being a good dancer but also knowing the music really well and also DJing. So there's a lot of um ambition here and uh, yeah, you're also in Buenos Aires currently. So that's uh, also one up, it's a kind of opportunity that I really liked um, f from the start because it's uh, I, you know you're not you're not from Buenos Aires but you are there and I don't think I've done an interview yet uh, like directly uh, on the spot so to say so um, but there's also other so we're going to talk a bit about uh, Buenos Aires and how you experience it but also some other things uh, that are of interest to you and uh, yeah that I haven't really seen yet uh, in this interview uh, series yet so um so can you please uh give us a short summary of who you are for the people who are not familiar with you uh hi lucas thank you for inviting me i i really hope that this interview is interesting for anybody uh to listen to uh, i am a bulgarian born swiss but I have lived in many different countries around the world and I consider myself a little bit of as a as a nomad, as, as a person who feels at home in many cultures. Um, I am very passionate about tango, uh, as you mentioned, ambitious about it even. Um, and uh, I consider myself a tanguera. Um, that is a frequent social tango dancer who has deep-seated interest in tango music and tango as a culture. Um, I'm a tango DJ. Uh, outside of uh, tango, um, I am a mother. I am a teacher of physics, mathematics, and computer science at a high school. I am also um, somebody who loves uh, sports, at the moment, yoga and boxing. Oh, boxing I love, uh, uh, yes, I love uh, Argentine folklore outside of tango too. I, I love Argentina as a country, but no, mostly Buenos Aires. And uh, in general, as a person, I'm I'm interested in philosophy and science, in um, uh, literature. I read a lot. Okay. So this is in a Yes, and uh, then can you uh, tell me a bit about uh, about your tango history, like how you? Because I want to know how you got to the point where you are currently that we just discussed. I mean, you it's pretty clear that you have all these different things going on for you, even folklore. Um, but yeah, how 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 did you get into this? Um, I started dancing tango relatively recently. That means uh, just over ten years ago and uh, um, it was a chance I've been dancing all my life I have a history of ballet dancing jazz modern salsa kizomba foro swing mm. you name it okay uh, but uh, I discovered tango by chance and uh, initially for me tango was just a dance for the first few years maybe two three years um some of the music i danced to like many dancers in europe was even non tango i quickly discovered tango music though and uh, it became very important for me and i realized that tango is not just music but it's a whole culture there is tango poetry there is the culture and the tradition of tango it's a lived culture and this is very important for me and uh, I started collecting tango music uh, with the idea of just being a better dancer, uh, which developed into the idea of being a DJ. Uh, but it took me a long time to trust myself to start putting music on. I am not a person who learns strictly by experience. I need to gather um, a lot of information uh, learn a lot. Uh, my grandfather used to joke that I need a PhD in everything before I try to say anything about it. So um, uh, this is how I approached DJing too. And uh, 
for me, tango is a passion right now, something that takes a large portion of my free time and is very important for me on many different levels. Um, it remains a dance also. That means socially, I, I love dancing. It's a way for me to connect to other people, not just uh, with my mind, but with my body too. And I find this uh, um, incredible that I have this opportunity to share so much with people uh, in such a way. But also um, tango for me at the moment is history, culture, uh, the music, its development, um, very much poetry. Um, what tango lyrics say are important for me. Um, so all of this is is important for me at the moment. Yeah, so maybe that's also what I meant with ambition, because there's a lot of dancers who just dance, <laughs> and some of them are really good. But I think... Um... There's also like a smaller uh, population that, that that really wants to really un deeply understand uh, what they are dancing to and uh, why it is uh, good and why, you know, so that's something I see in you, like a very, like a, like a, like a, like a wish to explore uh, things. And, uh, um, beyond the surface. And that's... Um, yeah, that's also why I like talking uh, with people like you, because I think there's always something to learn from people who really take this very seriously and, um, yeah, really investigate what's going on. Um, so, um, uh, so, so how long have, have, how long have you been dancing? Um, uh, I've been dancing for just over 10 years. Okay, okay. But I suppose and, then because... Uh, it's it's been pretty intense. So um, I think um, the number itself has no meaning because uh, some people start dancing 10 years ago, make a pause of five, six years and then start again. Um, and other people like me, when I started, I used to dance about 15 hours each week. Uh, and uh, I keep coming back to Buenos Aires and I spend a month or two every year and I dance nonstop every night. Um, I go to marathons when I'm in Europe and I dance a lot too. Uh, so I think everybody's experience is, is very individual and uh, I am very reluctant to put a number on, on tango experience. It's it's it for me. This number is is doesn't say much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's put it that way. Yeah, but I suppose you you also with the dancing, not just with the music that, that you said you needed a PhD before starting to DJ. Uh, yes. I, I suppose that's yes. also true for your dancing. Like you, you probably really went yes. uh, down the deep end with that. Yes, I've taken many lessons. I'm still taking lessons. And I'm also learning the leader role, and this is very important for me. Uh, I am very sorry. One of the things I regret about my tango journey is that I didn't start leading from the beginning. I was discouraged from this exactly the same way I was discouraged from being DJ. And uh, um, I wish I had started earlier, but um, there is no time like now. So, <laughs> And maybe so... Uh, just to understand what we're going to discuss about Buenos Aires, uh, do you uh, do you have like a, a certain way to describe your dance style and your preferences? Oh, that's a very big topic. I will try to be brief. Um, in general, I like close embrace dancing. Uh, I started with what was in Europe called Tango Nuevo which meant everything, um, but I in, evolved. I consider myself somewhere between a milonguera and a salon dancer. Mm. Like both of those describe me well. The embrace is very important for me. If there is no connection, 
in the embrace and most I understand this as a close embrace um, if there is no emotion connection to the music while dancing for me this is not tango it's I don't know aerobics exercise but not tango um, but I think this is very personal um, I also one a pair of my teachers also as scenario dancers but that doesn't mean that I that you would ever see me dancing a scenario but I like learning from them a lot so I see myself as a diverse dancer uh, I could under circumstances dance very differently and I think this is very important for tango that you adapt to your partner it's a shared experience it's not mine it it belongs to us to the couple and so I despite the fact that I like the close embrace I I wouldn't try to put any etiquette on myself in that respect either I have danced um let's say uh in different styles in the past too so i guess that, that's, that's kind of what i want to ask as well but like you describe some things that are maybe more typically milonguero even though it doesn't have to be but are there also certain like more like salon elements in your in in your dancing yes in in my learning definitely i've learned from a lot of mostly i I'm learning from salon teachers okay and some scenario teachers so, so my learning has been largely focused on that but through my experience which is extensive in just dancing in buenos aires and, and in certain events that i like in europe my, my preference my soul my love is for the close embrace dancing okay um Yes, it. I guess it's very hard. Uh, we have never danced together. If we had danced together, you would know exactly what I mean. Mm -hmm. I think this is something that's very interesting in tango, that um, you don't need words. After one tanda, you can feel the other person so well on so many aspects, and it is so hard to describe in words. I, I find it very hard to describe. Okay. Um so last question about this but i think it's kind of related to what we're going to talk about later but like the kind of places you like going to to in buenos aires for example so you've told me before this interview that you like a variety of places but is there a reason why you choose these uh salon teachers or these uh, scenario teachers um i guess because uh, i i learn a lot from them there is a type of learning a sort of more methodical technical way of looking at the body and the connection that i uh that works well for me um especially as a leader now which i find very hard um at the moment so i but at the same time i find that the other style of dancing in a certain sense, you can learn with a lot of experience. I thank the old milongueros in Buenos Aires and in Europe have, who have taught me this other way of dancing. It's, I believe part of it is something you cannot learn. You, um, you cannot put a technique on it because it, it's it's a feeling it's a connection it's um i have learned it also in in the way that i normally learn things but i believe i've mostly learned from just dancing with thousands and thousands of people and and repeatedly dancing with some people where i find this extreme connection which just happens like this and uh uh for me, it's very important. And at this stage, I can pretty much tell with whom I'm going to have this connection to. Okay. I can look at dancers who have it and I can try to dance with them because I think we will both enjoy it. And dancers, meaning uh, women and men, I, I like dancing with both. 
Okay. Um, so I, I think that the learning um, is, uh, I, I believe there is nothing can replace learning from the, from the old dancers and from new dancers that like the Milonguero style. And um, it's, it's less verbal learning though. It's more sort of you feel your way around. Uh, Let's put it that way. You experience it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm almost sorry for asking you this these questions, but um, it also has to do with, I, I again, I described you as ambitious, and I think there's a lot of uh, desire in you to uh, do this really well. So that's also why I like unleashing these questions on you, because uh, it's also things that have interested me for a while, and you're completely right. Like, there are some things even um, across these styles that are 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 blending, and especially if you dance with a lot of different good dancers, if you have the opportunity to do that, sometimes you dance yes. with someone you feel like I dance better just because this person, even as as a leader, like you you feel like I'm dancing way way better now simply because this follower is so good. Um, so I I suppose if you're a woman, it happens even more because. The leader's part in the in in what's going on is 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 yeah it's more like you can see see more like yeah he has this style and he has that style, uh, whereas with women it's a bit less easy to see. Of course, they still have their own style, but it's like less obvious. Um, so because there's a lot of things uh, that I want to discuss left, I have to leave uh, this part here. Ask you about uh, Buenos Aires. Um, so. Can you please just um, kind of summarize? So you already said that you go, uh, did you say once a year or twice a year? Sorry. Or did you say I go a it, month a year? Mostly once a year. I, I, I will okay. summarize it, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I have been coming to Buenos Aires every year since 2015, except for 2021. I, I didn't, during the pandemic, I didn't manage to come in 2021. And uh, I mostly spent one to two months here when I come. Rarely less than a month. I okay. I haven't spent less than a month. Uh, so and uh, um, yes. about your your current. So you were going to summarize. Maybe I'm interrupting you, but uh, can you maybe summarize? Okay. Like, uh, so yeah. I, um, yes, I. Uh, um, I will try to tell you what's important for me at the moment, how long I've been here, how long I still have, and uh, also more generally. For me, coming to Buenos Aires is, um, first of all, not only connected to tango. I I love the place. I love Argentina. I, I love the huge, vibrant, emotional house of Buenos Aires. It's, it's I feel alive here to the extent which I rarely do in Switzerland where I live. I forgot to say that, I think. And I need that to, 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 to feel like I'm living. <laughs> so for me, this is part of why I come. Um, I love the, the vibrant community. I, I love a city who never sleeps. I love the food. I love the parks. I have my favorite sushi places, my favorite uh, uh, parishas, my favorite cafes, um, where I know the owners. I, I have my favorite yoga studio here. I I love the parks. I, it's just a place where I feel at home partially. I don't know why. Something that's missing for me for my normal day-to-day -day life. Um, this trip started uh, in the middle of February, and I have uh, about 10 days more left here. It's uh, just over one and a half months. Um, I will be cutting it a bit short because I have an opportunity to DJ at the biggest tango festival when I come back to Europe, which is in, not the biggest for Europe, but the biggest for Switzerland. Let me <laughs> explain this, which has been happening for 24 years every okay. year in Basel, except for the pandemic years, of course. And uh, for Switzerland, it's the largest uh, uh, tango event to my knowledge and being able to DJ there is, is an honor for me. I'm happy to do it and I will gladly 
cut my Buenos Aires trip short for that. Um, it's an important local event. Um, for me, currently in Buenos Aires, what's important is uh, um, I, of course, go dancing every night to one or two milongas. I take classes, I take group classes and private classes in leading at the moment. Okay. Um, I meet a lot of uh, friends who are either tango DJs or in many other ways connected to tango history and the music. And I learn from them extremely much. Um, so this is a big part of uh, why I come here. Um, some of those people are extremely interesting and mostly unknown in the larger tango community. And I'm very sorry for that. Yeah. Uh, because they are, for me, my link to Pugliese, to Di Sarli, to the real people. Yeah. To, to the milongas the way they used to be 50 years ago. And this is something that is extremely important for me. And when I come to Buenos Aires, the last few times that I've come, I feel like I'm taking a time machine. Meeting those people, I, I can transport myself back in time and learn so much. And it's uh, for me, this is priceless. I cannot do this anywhere else. These hey. people, they live Tango. They lived it before and they live it now. I will mention them later. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, in more detail. I, yes. I want to leave, leave it short at the moment. Um, another part of me coming to Buenos Aires is also a me time. Uh, being a single mom and an ambitious tango DJ and dancer and a person who works 100% at a school, at a high school, means that I my life in Europe is extremely intense and focused. Yeah. Um, I barely have time to, to think about myself, uh, what I want to do in life, whether I want any changes. And uh, so coming to Buenos Aires is a way for me to escape that and sort of um, think about what I want from life in general, just to have a more balanced life. Uh, it's 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 a bit of an escape too, you can say. Yes, yes. Um, resetting. Uh, uh, opportunity to live a different part of me, which I cannot express in my daily life. Okay. But it's not just about tango, I suppose. It's not just about tango. Yes, I, I, I go to yoga here. I have my favorite yoga studio. I go three, four times a week. So you would say intensely. Um, I, I take time to just meditate and think about things. Um, in general, in terms of philosophy and psychology and what, what I want to do with my life. It's a, it's a way for me to reconnect with me. Yes. It's very egoistical in this sense. Yeah, but I've, I, I, I mean, it's good because you're not stuck in this routine. Uh, you give yourself some time um, to breathe. And sometimes the routines can be, I mean, the generally routines are good for you, but they can be so suffocating sometimes that it's hard to like get an overview of what your life's actually like, where you want to go. So it makes a lot of sense to me that you take this time out. I mean, you can call it an escape, but it sounds like a time out to me so that you can just uh, rebalance a bit. And um, it's so awesome that you find a place that's not just about tango for you, but that um, where, where you really feel um, a place that's so vibrant. I mean, it's, I've, I've always heard this from people. Um, like there's something about the culture and about the city that's um, just makes you feel like you're part of it, even though you're you you literally aren't because you're not living there and you're not from there originally. But still, it's easy to um, to at least feel you're part of something. Actually, I I want to say something about this. Um, a lot in the beginning, I I used to think that that. Uh, Tango is, is very Argentine, that it belongs to Buenos Aires to a large extent. And in, in a certain sense, a lot of people used to tell me that it's like this, that me as a non-Argentine, um, I have not grown up listening to tango since I was one or two years old, et cetera, et cetera. 
I cannot feel certain things, understand certain things. I think this is bullshit. I'm sorry, but it's complete bullshit. I think you can feel at home in a certain culture. And I definitely feel at home here, whatever somebody says, however short my experience is. Um, it is something personal. And sorry, but Argentina is a land of people who have come from Italy, from Spain, from Poland, um, more recently from Russia, Ukraine, everywhere. It's it's a country of immigrants. So um, it's this is a big part of it actually for me, why I feel at home also, because there are all those different vibrant alive communities. And um, it's it's not being from Buenos Aires also means accepting this difference. They live it much more than I think we do in Europe. I think they can be accepting of diversity much more than we can be. But this is another topic. Yes. Uh, so, um, so you've given me this introduction. Um, and there's some things you're going to return to later. Uh, during this interview um so my, my second question you already answered it to some extent but maybe uh you can add to that if you want uh it's like talk about what you like about buenos aires uh why it's so special and why you keep coming back and maybe you have discussed more like the life side and the tango side so far but i'll let you judge what, what you want to say of course um for me, as I said, it's, it's just, I feel at home here. I feel like I can live parts of me that exist within me that have no place in Switzerland, that I cannot live. Um, parts of me as a woman, parts of me as a, as a um, tango dancer, parts of me as a person. Um, I can experiment and explore more because uh, I have the feeling that in a in a more vibrant, chaotic place, mistakes are easier to tolerate than in a very strict, ordered society. And uh, it it is a very general view, but in the specific sense, of course, um, I cannot escape the fact that for me this is a little bit of a, of an escape too. I have the opportunity to meet people not only from here. I've been meeting the same people partially for eight years and also people who I know from Europe for a long time and also new people and new people that share my passions. And uh, for me, tango, the social aspect of tango is very important also connecting to people and seeing different ways of life and perhaps living some different ways for myself too so this is this is a big part um it's just everything is different just taking the bus here is different <laughs> there are those signs in the buses which say the door will open when the bus is moving with at most five kilometers per hour <laughs> and it happens you have to really hold on unless you want to be expelled from the bus while it's stopping the door will open and it's i know this might sound like a critique but i actually like it i there are things like this which make me feel more alive different uh, um more accepting and and I, this is what i like about buenos aires um it it's just different enough that i i need this otherwise i'm not whole mm. let's put it that way and in a sense of tango, because of, of course you mentioned meeting all these people and sharing an interest, but like the dancing itself, what are the elements that the, that uh, are addictive? The dancing say? itself, first, it's 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 like a non-stop marathon, but also with people who tend to know more about the side of tango that I'm also interested in its history, its lyrics. Um, dancing with somebody that will not only connect to you with their body 
not only will have an excellent musicality, but also perhaps you would both dance the tango lyrics because you know them. Um, and you could show a certain type of emotion that you share. It's, it's, it's another level of connection. And I find it much more often here than I find it in Europe. I'm not saying one is bad, the other one is good. I'm not saying I don't love going around and dancing in Europe. Um, but um, there are certain things of tango as a culture, um, certain things connected to the language and the lyrics that I much more often find here than I find in Europe. Um, and also the, the importance of the embrace as opposed to the figures. Um, Europe is sometimes could be oriented towards how it looks from the outside to dance. For me, tango is, is inside. It's, it's what happens between the two people. You cannot see that from outside very often. And this happens to me more often and of course more intensely and for a longer periods of time nonstop here. So um, that's why I like coming here, which doesn't mean that I doesn't don't dance with a lot of uh, foreigners who are here like me too. I don't make a distinction. A good tango embrace is a good tango embrace. It's <laughs> um, somebody who's interested in tango could be from anywhere. So it's it's not like there is a label and a flag on the on the faces of the people I dance with. No, it's, no. There is no nationality associated with it. That's what I also like about tango. It is international. So you you could meet and these people it is who are international here too. So you could meet these people who are very conscious about lyrics and music, even though they're not Argentinian. Yes, and I can also meet a lot of Argentinian who know a lot more. Um, for example, I I never have uh, people who tell me about their meetings with Desarli or with Rufino or with Podesta. I, I hear first time accounts from my friends here, which I never do in, in Europe. And this for me is priceless because for me, um, the singers of tango, uh, the orchestra directors, the poets, um, the fact that we meet in the same barrios that they sing about in the tangos, this is important for me. I, it's not important for many people and it doesn't have to be important. I, I again, I'm not um, judging it, uh, but for me, it is very important. And uh, for me being able to connect. Also um, at the moment, I, through tango DJing, I, I'm trying to be something of a, Mm, collector of tango music. I've recently also started collecting vinyl records, um, listening to them at home. I don't plan to be DJing with vinyl anytime soon, uh, but I come with a second suitcase, which I go back filled with vinyls and CDs and books sometimes. I took about 15 kilograms of tango books last time. This time, it's not only tango books, it's it's different things. So part of me being here is also connected to, I, I, I love the Spanish language too. I like, I started reading literature and uh, um, contemporary books. I just pick up from a bookstore, just like this without knowing anything. And uh, it's incredible. I love that. Yeah, so you're living the, the Porteño uh, life. Uh... Uh, as a foreigner, uh, like yes. you're you're immersing yourself to the max, so to say. Yes. And you you talk about meeting these people. Um, so in order to yes, understand that, I can that... start telling you a little bit about them if you'd like. Uh, people that that are important for me. Um, yes. A lot of those people I first met through other friends or through online classes that I took. Um, for example, in Buenos Aires, there is a group of seven DJs. 
which call themselves Asimut, they are the Academia para Conservar la Identidad de la Musicalización del Tango de Buenos Aires, which means they would like to conserve the way traditional tango music is being played, DJed, in the milongas in Buenos Aires. And they have, for example, daily sort of milonga, two-hour milongas online, which anybody can hear. And they are all great DJs, which I also meet at local milongas. And some of them have become very good friends of mine. Others are just acquaintances that I go to their milongas when they put music on and I talk to them. Um, and I have learned extremely much from them. One very important figure for me is Daniel Lozino, whom I met through a friend of mine, um, Teresa Faust, that you've also interviewed. Yeah. And uh, um, he is just living tango and, and living tango music. His knowledge is, is boundless. And I can spend hours with him talking about music, listening to music, learning about music, DJing. Um, he started DJing so young um, at the Savoy or with milongas, which used to be, um, they would have tandas of, of cumbia, of rock and roll, um, of tango, just mixed. It, it was the time before the tourists came and, and tango became more established in the tango, tango vals, tango, tango milonga type of DJing with cortinas. Um, he has personally known many of the greats in tango. And I just feel so honored to be able to talk to him and, and learn from him because um, he has extreme knowledge that almost nobody knows about. Another person that's very important for me is Claudio Torelli. Um, he's uh, um, an author, he's a radio journalist, long years about tango. He's also the Buenos Aires Tango Club mm. um, that still sells a lot of tango music. And uh, um, there are also the um, people like uh, Fernando del Priore, um, the son of Oscar del Priore, who have, uh, I, Oscar has written some of the best books about tango. Uh, in terms of history, the, the singers. Um, and Fernando is a docente at CEDBA. This is the, the Centro Educativo de Tango in Buenos Aires. And um, um, he was part of the group of lecturers I have when I took a six month course on the Diplomatura of the History of Tango, which was online during the pandemic. I met a lot of those people uh, there. Uh, the course was uh, uh, organized uh, uh, by Instituto Argentino del Tango, uh, by Marcelo Castello. Mm -hmm. And there is a current uh, smaller course of uh, just musicalization, so playing music as a DJ, which they run recurrently twice a year with uh, many current DJs, um, singers or um, historiographers of tango. So it's, it's, it's a very nice course that I've taken twice and I highly recommend. Um, meeting those people just at cafes and listening to their stories is, is just, it's just incredible. Last time I met with Claudio Torelli, we were talking about the new film about Omero Esposito because he was, Claudio was telling me about his interview with Roberto Rufino. Mm. And uh, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, they used to call this singer of this early, El, El, El Pibe Terremoto, the, the earthquake uh, uh, boy. Uh, he used to have such explosive personality. And hearing personal stories about him is, is just so precious. But I was listening to all those stories and then Claudio just took out his telephone and, and he showed me the first time in my life, I saw a video of a few seconds of Disarli playing, which I, I showed you last time we talked. Uh, and 
it is part of video footage that was found on some VHS tapes, which made itself into this movie uh, about Homero Exposito, one of the great uh, poets of tango. And it's, I don't know, there's some things that I would sometimes miss and they come to me in those conversations so vibrantly. As I said, I feel like I'm in a time machine back there that I can see those people. And uh, yeah, it's it's like you're doing my and, job, but not recording it. It's like uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe, yes, you are right. You you have made it your purpose to try to talk to as many different people and uh, transmit many different views of tango. And uh, yes, I'm not recording it. It's it's for my personal use. It's it's incredible, though. It's but uh, just... yeah, it's still good that you that you do it because you can learn so much from that and. So much. Yes, but also um, I I have uh, friends, for example, a friend from whom I learned um, very much as a DJ, um, Nelson Mastro Domenico. He's a Colombian who lives here and uh, he's also a tango singer. And we share this passion for tango lyrics. Differences, I sing badly, he sings very well. <laughs> so it is really great to have uh, friends like this who share a part of passion most of your other friends don't understand most people get annoyed and um, with reason when i mutter the tango words in their ear while i dance and i try not to do it very hard sometimes they just escape me um and it's horrible to do that i know but it's just I feel so strongly sometimes when I dance. Uh, a lot of tango lyrics have personal meaning for me too. And connecting to other people like this, for whom this is so important. Um, but this does not uh, stop in Buenos Aires. There are people in Europe who do this. Um, I have learned and keep learning a great deal from Michael Lavoca. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, without him, I don't know how much I, without his books, without his listening club, without his Tango Bahia with Doug uh, Stanford, I don't know. I would have known much less about Tango too. Uh, Teresa Faust is another person from whom I'm still learning and learned a lot. And there are countless many, I, I cannot mention them all. But I also just, I know a lot of the current DJs in Buenos Aires. Those are people like Gustavo Rosas or Mariano Romero or Mario Orlando um, or uh, Chique. Uh, those are mm, active DJs at the moment, including the ones that I mentioned before from the Asimut, um, Carlos Rey, he's one of my uh, DJ idols, if I, if I have such. Uh, Gile Nieto, uh, Kike Camargo, Daniel Borelli, they're, they're just countless Ricardo Saluski, incredible DJs. I see them at milongas and I learn from them by just being in the milonga and dancing and listening to their music. So yes. I don't even care if I don't dance all the time because I'm constantly learning. I am experiencing it also as a dancer, which is great because that means I, I don't always agree with them. The fact that I admire them doesn't mean sure. that I always like the situation they put me in. And I learn from this too. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's incredible. Um, and uh, um, also Guillermo Monti, who lives in Berlin, but was visiting here. I listened to a lot of his sets here too, and I really enjoy them. And he has a blog from which I've learned a lot. Uh, there are various people I've met only online that I keep reading from or sometimes communicating, just writing messages. Um, it's incredible how much energy example, you have. Like yeah. how, how much, uh, um, it's almost like I, you're, you're making it an academic uh, a pursuit of uh, yes, learning I, about Tango. Yes, I am making it an academic pursuit. Yes, it's... it's uh, I will give one last example and I, I will give you back uh, uh, the baton, let's put it that way. Um, I learned, for example, um, two of the great authors of uh, tango um, 
lyrics uh, Pascal Contursi and his son, Jose Maria Contursi. And uh, um, Jose Maria Contursi's love for a certain woman, Susana Grisel, resulted in more than 30 incredible tangos. Yes. And uh, just in this little space, um, if you look at these poems that he wrote to her over so many years. And, and, and the tango story is actually very interesting because when they met, he was, Jose Maria Contursi was 24, she was 15, he was married. She was, of course, not. They fell in love, but this was, of course, impossible love. She went back. Uh, she was shortly visiting Buenos Aires. And uh, his sort of longing for her resulted in all those incredible tango lyrics over the years. And 30 years later, um, when they were both single and he was drinking himself to death almost, uh, a friend of his contacted her. She came back to Buenos Aires and she they married. So this is one of those great dramatic tango stories. And I have learned so much from talking to various people, reading their blogs about it. And for me, this background history exists. I can make a thunder with a certain orchestra and lyrics about Grisel. Then this for me is, 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 is fun and it's, it's a extreme experience. And I can recognize the two or three Grisel tangos in a thunder. And when I dance it, it's, it's, the experience is just incomparable. So this is just something to tell you what I'm getting out of it, why I do it. I go into this depth because I dance better. I connect on more levels. It, the, the experience just explodes in terms of intensity when I do that. Yes, yes. But that also explains why you do so much in Buenos Aires, like why, why you uh, look up these people and why you uh, connect with them and learn from them. Maybe they can even learn something from you sometimes. I mean, it's an exchange to some extent, right? Uh, or, or or not? I, I uh, doubt it, but okay. I doubt it, but uh, I'm happy that they help me learn. Yes, well, I, I guess maybe it's are... fun for for them that you are from a foreign culture. Actually, I, mean, I can tell you. Okay. Um, a lot of them are very grateful that they are people like me who bring the Argentine tango culture to Europe to this depth. They are grateful that, that, that they are DJs who are very knowledgeable and would like to learn. They're just grateful to see their culture being brought. Because um, I don't know, but for me, tango is a lived culture, which partially means that tango has to evolve. And in Europe, it has had its own evolution, and that's good so. It is different from the tango that is here. And I have nothing, I think it's it's great. Tango is a lived culture. It's it's not dead. It's it's something that develops, changes, comes back perhaps to the roots sometimes, which is what I'm noticing in Europe. But I still believe that you should learn the history. For me, this is very important. And I, I feel honored to be able to do that. I, I feel honored that they are giving me this knowledge and I can bring it back. And it's funny that you say, because my friends in Europe think that I know a lot about tango. What I think is that I know nothing about tango. I've just scratched the surface. This is what I think. But I, I am learning and I am happy doing it. And the more my friends ask me, the more I can learn because they ask me for something specific. I don't know it. I go and learn it ah, yeah, because yeah. it's, it's learning is social also. So this is very important. I would not learn so much if it wasn't also for my friends who are so interested, if it wasn't for the group of women DJs that I administer that I would like to talk about maybe a bit later. Yes. Uh, because time is asking rapidly. So I think I'll just, yes. uh, ask you one more question about Buenos Aires um, because it's more about the dancing so I would like to know about like what kind of places you go to because in this in the beginning we discussed that you have like these different things that are interesting to you not just the most traditional milongas but also some going to some other places or going to these popular 
places where younger crowds go and professional dance like there's others so can you tell me a bit about that uh, aspect of your buenos aires uh, yes. passion yes i i can just tell you a few highlights um for example uh, i um like going to a place on monday which is called el motivo a lot of people People know it. It's a practica. That means uh, there's uh, um, um, no cortinas, but uh, a standard tango music running. There's mostly very good DJs, and there is a mix of complete beginners and experienced tango dancers. There's a mix of foreigners and locals. And uh, um, the sound quality at that place uh, is, is not that great for me as a DJ, but the DJs are excellent. They invited, so I really enjoy this practical atmosphere where you can dance, for example, more than one tanda with a certain person. Adjacent to this, this happened to me yesterday, so it's it's something fresh and I do it almost every week. I, I go to a, a popular milonga for young people and tourists. It's not a milonga, it's a party. It's a party for tango dancers. It's called Muy Lunes, and it's it's in an underground club. Uh, um, it's it has a party vibe. There are large cortinas uh, with new music. Um, it could be anything, uh, and it would be danced. It's not just cumbia or things like this. It could be just new danceable music, just the newest music, and and people will go and dance it, like in a disco club. And there is also traditional tangos with a traditional set, tango, tango, vals, tango, tango, milonga. Um, there is varied DJs, excellent floor. It's extremely packed, and foreigners like this place as much as some locals. So it's 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 a very mixed. It's a totally different atmosphere than the practical atmosphere of El Motivo, for example. Contrasted to those two is where I will be going as a first milonga today. I often go to more than one milongas here per night or per day. Let's put it that way. Sometimes it starts in the afternoon. Is uh, a place called Cachirulo, which almost everybody knows, and this is a very traditional milonga. In for me at the moment maybe the best tango club in Buenos Aires, El Beso. Um, since Salon Canning closed, yeah. um, Nacional is also a great place in terms of floor, music, air conditioning, etc. Um, but it's a little bit harder to cabeceo people there. But in terms of traditional milongas, um, I dance extremely much with a lot of porteños in Cachirulo. Some of them I've been dancing with since I first came here 2015. Every time I come back, I dance with them. Some of them I start dancing with today. And it's a milonga which separates men and women on two different sides. There are two rows. You want to be in the middle of the first row, otherwise it's hard. If you come with a couple or a crowd, like when my friend had a birthday you sit on the back and it's a bit harder to dance so a lot of people don't like this milonga for me I have always enjoyed it and even after recent events where <laughs> I have had my doubts I still keep going um, because, because again sorry for interrupting but because again you find something specific that you might not find in the places you mentioned before, I, so you're you're picking from. I all find these... those milongueros that I love dancing with. There, it, I only dance with men because it's not allowed to dance with uh, uh, women. There, you have to be dressed properly. If you go in your sneakers on the dance floor, the organizer will come and kick you out. Um, so it is uh, um, most a lot of foreigners find this milonga offensive and hard to swallow. I keep going to it, but I wanted to give you an example of a very different experience, which has its great positive points. The fact that there is a lot of dancing, great DJs invited. Carlos Rey is the DJ who DJs there, for example, every Saturday. And uh, I really enjoy his music. So this is another type of milonga. Then um, there is, of course, the famous club La Viruta, which... 
I go to most Wednesdays and uh, uh, Sundays as a second milonga. There's usually excellent music. There's a very good mix of um, foreigners and locals and professional dancers. Um, and people actually do mix there a little bit more than in other places. It is extremely dark though, so cabeceo, except for uh, the next table is not really an option. So where you're sitting is very important. Um, but it's a place that has wonderful coffee, for example, which is not very usual for Buenos Aires milongas. Um, it's known uh, for Horacio Godoy, his music and uh, the lessons he gives sometimes before there are various lessons there that are not only tango, but also rock and roll, for example, which I've also taken and I enjoy. Um, then, of course, uh, there is clubs like uh, Milongas, like La Parisha, which I mentioned to you when we talked earlier. I used to go before, um, maybe about four years ago or so. Um, recently, I only went once. Um, it's uh, a totally different type of Milonga, uh, where there's half of the people are professionals and they do dance kind of with themselves uh, they are like the the best dancers you know from Europe dancing in a local milonga yeah. and uh, they don't necessarily mix with people like me I'm just a social dancer uh, and there could be a lot of beginners in such milongas too and it's generally dark so I don't go there to dance a lot, but for a different experience. I, I went for the show that friends were giving and I was happy to sit at their table and I had some wonderful dances. I connected with an organizer of a milonga outside of town uh, who is organizing Milonga Alagora. Everything is for free. She's teaching and organizing and people just give her money if they have and however much they have. And this is the other Buenos Aires experience. This is the the, mon, the, the place which tourists never see. And uh, she's a good friend of mine for um, many years now. And I, it's really important that such people exist. And uh, it's been very hard on her, but also extremely, people give her a lot back. And she's very happy to be teaching tango in such an environment. Um, and I could reconnect with her at this place. Also, this place has sort of a competitive uh, part, which is connected to the, a lot of uh, um, professionals that come there. So basically, you can put your name in a jar and they select the names of two, sometimes three couples at random that then dance for everybody and the people at the milonga decide who uh, wins yeah. and the winning is usually a champagne maybe entrance to some other milonga at this time it was entrance to pipi cuckoo and champagne pipi cuckoo is a milonga for young people at la nacional on, on friday and uh, it's um my friends entered and won uh so it was a different experience for me but it is not something that I aspire to, this competitive side of tango. But I, I have guess you enjoy do... watching it, right? Like when I enjoy when watching present. it, I enjoy it. Yes, I am present there. And I think it's very interesting because Europe doesn't have such different yeah. milongas. That's why I'm mentioning it, because this is a competitive side of tango where it's um, sort of the, the those people might be the new champions later. There are a lot of young people also that dance. This is what I appreciate about Buenos Aires that I didn't mention until now. All those milongas have extremely many young people starting to dance tango now. And uh, they are already very good dancers, even though they are so young and they are very ambitious and it's great talking to them and dancing with them. And... Um, it this those kind of people do not exist in Europe. I mean, they are um, young people who start tango, but uh, it, it is to a different e extent. 
I mean, th those people are dancing every night and they're learning, they're taking lessons all the time. Yeah. Sometimes they have um, mentors who give them lessons for free. Some of the most famous teachers because they cannot afford to pay, etc. Yeah. So yeah. Um, there are many more other milongas that I enjoy in Buenos Aires. Uh, uh, there's Fridays with Dos Orisho or um, at El Beso or Disepolo that uh, I I like, and some of them are sort of a mix of of traditional and new. There is milongas like uh, Floreal and Gente Amiga, which are more outside Buenos Aires. Like you have to, to drive uh, maybe six, seven, eight kilometers to get there. It's a little bit harder. It's easier with a car, with a colectivo, like I normally go, the, the, the name of the bus here. It's sometimes quite scary <laughs> uh, because the bus doesn't always stop where it's supposed to stop, etc. You're not supposed to take your phone out, but you're supposed to orient. Um, there are various interesting parts of uh, the nightlife in Buenos Aires. But those are more traditional milongas where a lot of the local people go. And it's more of a milonga where people come to take a lesson, eat, and also dance. Yeah. So there's sometimes tables with uh, a lot of friends from the local community that uh, sometimes don't mix very much with foreigners if they don't know you. If you get introduced, they're usually very open. Right. And uh, there is a totally different kind of dancing there, which I very much enjoy too. It's there, especially through my last trip in Buenos Aires in July, a lot of even the central milongas were like this. They were, there were almost no tourists. So what you will meet at Milongas depends on what time you come. This time when it's still summer here, even though it's supposed to be fall, it's extremely hot. Um, there's uh, a lot of tourists like me. Uh, so there is, I will just mention two last ones. Uh, there's an organizer and uh, professor of tango, Carolina Kuto, that I really, really admire and uh, appreciate for all she's doing uh, uh, for Argentine tango here. And she has two milongas uh, that I love. The one on Sunday uh, in El Beso, La Rosa, is on in the afternoon is one of my favorite milongas. It's packed, but again, it's El Beso. It's wonderful sound, wonderful invited DJs, it's oriented on dancing. And it's, it's just great experience. And uh, um, there is also La Central in the mythic club Marabu, where you also have to go if you're here in Buenos Aires, where Tanturi and Troilo and Disarli were, uh, Tanturi and Troilo opened and Disarli was a, a staple uh, orchestra. And it's just, it's, it's a place with so much history. Uh, on Sundays, uh, a friend of mine, Lorena Buza, has a milonga, which is organized also with live orchestras very often. It's also a great place to go. So there are many, many more. And I guess that's what you wanted, that this is a sort of the places for milongas change. For example, I've gone to Cachirulo for eight years and it has been in three different places so far. Yeah. <laughs> At the moment, it's El Beso. So clubs come and go close and open again but uh, some of the milongas remain and uh, um, this is something that everybody has to choose for themselves i like variety i i like many aspects of tango and um, i there's many more milongas that i go to and can talk about but i i would like to yeah well leave it's them out for now it's it's interesting because you told me before this interview that you feared that talking about current milongas would not have a, like a very long um, expiry date, so to say. But I think yes. it doesn't it doesn't matter the type of milongas that you're describing. Like some of them might disappear, but it's like the variety in Buenos Aires that's present. That's always present. I mean, it was present ten years ago as well. So it's it's it may be differently, but it's always going to be different scenes within one scene. So it's kind of nice when someone in an interview in English talks about all these different uh, things you can pick. Like you can just pick, like you can pick the color red, and you can pick the color yellow and the orange. Like this variety, or, or like different yes. fruits. Like this is a mango, and that's so an I, apple. I will it's... encourage people. Yeah. Yes, I will encourage people who come to Buenos Aires to use Hoi Milonga or the 
Tango app to look at all the different milongas that are available. I, there were many I didn't mention, especially the ones where I go for uh, change of role uh, classes yeah. and practicas, and they are wonderful, and I love them. And uh, they at La Maleva, at Zorzal, at various other places. And uh, I would tell people to try to find their own way, to try many new things. Because there is this tendency in the beginning when I used to come, I will hang with other people. In the beginning, some of those people were tourists like me. With time, they became more local people. And you decide where to go based on where your crowd goes. Yeah, uh, And I would recommend that especially in a short stay you don't do that that you experience more because there is a lot to be experienced having said that me and my long stays i spend a lot of time with my girlfriends here so i i break my own rules or suggestions let's put it that way so the rest of the interview i would like to uh so we have more or less uh yeah 15 to 20 minutes left i would really like to ask you about uh, this uh, what women DJ group that you mentioned earlier while yes. we were talking about um, the music. Yes. So I, I I would say something about me as a DJ first and then I will go into the group. Yeah. Um, as I told you before our interview, I found it hard to start uh, as a DJ. Um, not so much because I'm a woman, but because uh, uh, I'm not Argentine <laughs> and I'm not an organizer, um, I don't have my own practica or milonga to put music in and learn how to put the music. And also because of me being a bit of a perfectionist and, and having to learn a lot before I dare do something. So I spent a lot of years just collecting music. I still do it. I spent a lot of years just learning uh, as I said, I, I made a whole six-month course of the history of tango, and I take uh, many courses in how to DJ um, privates too with some people. I have friends from whom I learn constantly, and this is something very important for me. Um, and after a certain time, after I was discouraged many times, sometimes quite brutally from people whom I trusted and um That's very sad. I eventually started DJing and I was frankly surprised that people will come to me and tell me I love your music I didn't want to stop dancing and I mostly DJ at local milongas at the moment for me it doesn't matter if I DJ for 10 people or for 450 I will put the same effort because for me, um, DJing is an extreme pleasure. Even when I dance, I dance one tanda with one person in one way, depending on how I feel at the moment, how I connect, what my emotions are, what the tanda is. When I put music, I, I can dance like 10 or 100 couples at the same time. I can see their faces. I can feel their emotions. I can help them enjoy it. And I never, never would have thought that it would give me so much pleasure to do that. I think this is a part of me as a woman. I like to make people happy, but it's very hard as a woman uh, to stand behind this because it could be used in various circumstances. I'm a feminist and I, 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 I very much fight with my old tendencies to try to make people happy. But a milonga as a DJ is for me the perfect place because I love trying to make the people happy there. I love seeing their faces. And, and seeing that I could do it was so great that I. this is how my second passion started. And it was initially about the music, mostly about the tango lyrics. I, I started even when I didn't know Spanish. I learned Spanish because of tango. But when I didn't learn Spanish, I started it like this because of the tango lyrics. And connected to that and my position as a woman, I soon realized that women tango DJs, I find have it a little bit harder at the moment. 
Um, they have a lot to offer. And I find our communities are poorer because uh, for one reason or another, for example, a lot of my women Tango DJ friends tell me that they're not comfortable with marketing themselves. Mm. And in the current situation, marketing helps a lot. And if you're not comfortable with it, you're not going to get exposure. However good you are, it's very hard to um, move internationally, not just locally. Internationally, I mean in Europe mostly. Yeah. Um, uh, and for me, um, I wanted to learn to DJ. So I, together with three friends of mine, we started a tango DJ group for women in my kitchen <laughs> um, shortly before the pandemic. The kitchen was there because it's the largest table I have in the apartment where we could go sit, drink, talk about DJing and still listen to the music that comes from the neighbor room. So um, we started this group together, but at the moment I am the one who's administering it. It's called Musicalizadoras. It's a private group um, for women DJs who are currently DJs, want to be DJs, um, its purpose is to help women network. This is one big thing for me. We are about 150 of us at the moment from everywhere, from Buenos Aires, from all pretty much European countries. We range from, I am just learning about tango music and I want to DJ. I have women like this in the group to people like me who are, experienced DJs DJing, but with not so much experience to internationally known DJs who are going all over the world and DJing for more than 10, 15 years or 20 yeah. uh, in some cases. So there's everything. And uh, the group is private and it's for women because I would like it to help women network and learn from each other in a sort of uh, more... Um, safe environment sometimes um i have been faced with a lot of men's planning in general tango groups which i cannot tolerate anymore and i don't want to tolerate um so and, and the environment can be a bit more competitive sometimes if uh if they're men like they they, yes. are, they can be a bit um no i think women and men are equally competitive they're just competitive in a different way Okay. But uh, being nasty to other people or just uh, answering questions based on your ego is not my way of learning. So this is something else that's very important for me for this group. So I'd like to support also new people who are starting and not patronize them. Yeah. I hate this being patronized when you first start. So like the and, gate um, gatekeeper mentality, that's what they use in uh, programming, gatekeeper mentality. That's sometimes yes. that's what happened to you, maybe, and it's it's like it can really demotivate people if um if yes. they get all this on on So I, yeah. I I feel very invested in this group, um, and I would be happy if more women who are not in the group contact me and would like to join us. I will give you the link uh, to post uh, after yeah. this video. Yeah. Uh, and also, um, I want to use this opportunity. To tell organizers that there are some wonderful women DJs that they don't know. Um, maybe some of us they do know and can ask for recommendations. And uh, I am in contact with some organizers who are incredible and they sometimes ask me specifically for only women DJs and they invite them internationally and uh, they've been very happy. Uh, and I would like us to be more visible because I believe we have a lot to offer that we haven't had the opportunity to share until now. Yes. And it, this is important for me. Um, so this is a, also, I am still thinking of ways how to make this goal for the group a little bit more realizable. At the moment, it's just on the thinking stage. Yes. Well, I think there's a lot of uh, things for you on the table, like a lot of projects and plans. And um, you've also shown that you have accomplished quite a lot. 
I'm sure it will go in the right uh, direction for you and these other women. So that's uh, that's quite interesting. Um, yeah, so maybe just one last question about this group. Like, um, do you feel that maybe the, um, the ambience is more constructive than it would be otherwise uh, if you're just among women? Um, I don't think specifically being among women makes a more constructive environment. Okay. I think uh, sex has nothing to do with it. Uh, I do believe, though, that moderation of the group is important. I have a very strict policy of uh, no advertisements and things like this. And I am part of many other um, groups that are helpful with men and women DJs. I am part of a lot of chats uh, of DJs. And not all of them are so helpful. Some of them are, are strongly uh, managed by certain strong personalities. And, and uh, this shows um, that means that we are not allowed to talk about certain topics, except if set uh, organizer of the group talks about the topics, then they are allowed. We're not allowed to do advertisement, except if they advertise or things like this. So I I don't subscribe to this kind of policy. So to answer your question, no, I don't think there's anything specifically about women, but I would like it to be this way. And in my small way, in my small private group, I would like it to be this way. I would like it to be about learning. And I very much encourage actually people to, to um have different opinions it's very important for me for example i tend to be very traditional as a dj and uh, i have a lot to learn from my colleagues who have a long experience of putting more new um, tango orchestras and uh, even alternative music and i am learning from them also in what environments in what places uh, so it is very important for me that there is no uniformity in the group because otherwise it's pointless. Yeah. But at the same time, it's very important that we are civil with each other. Uh, in, and uh, so far it has worked, but I hope it will continue in this, in this sense. Okay. Well, like I said, I will put, uh, put, um, uh, a, a link in the description uh, so that uh, women can apply if they're interested and uh, yeah I also uh, yeah see uh, I'm not sure if you have a DJ page but um, uh, maybe uh, uh... I do not have a DJ page okay. I use uh, Facebook uh, to post very many different things including some of my DJ dates which I haven't done recently Um at the moment, I am DJing mostly locally in Switzerland and in Germany and in Italy, um, Bulgaria, some countries that I visit uh, on a regular basis because they are close. Um, but I hope to be able to, if people like my music and uh, learn about it, uh, they can uh, hear me locally or also at some festivals. I'm going to Italy on the 20th of uh, May for Ambaraba to put music. And um, if you want to hear me DJ, <laughs> you can come there. Uh, for example, uh, this is one of my next international dates, but also of course the big festival in Basel is, is, uh, is, a, is a big stage for me. And uh, I am also one of those women who so far has been a bit reluctant about uh self-promotion myself out there self-promotion yes yeah. i i i don't find anything wrong with it i think it's very good i i just personally feel at the moment a little uncomfortable with it but just a little i'm learning i'm yeah. I'm, I'm doing it oh uh, i mean this is also uh uh to a I'm, I'm glad i got you to do this here. i'm glad i got you to yes, do this thank so, you um... for the opportunity and uh, um i i I, I was very reluctant for this interview because I it's it's for me this is a huge step for share something sharing something like this online it's uh, yes so thank you for.
for making me a bit more open-minded than I was until now. Well, thank you for the interview uh, today. And I hope to meet you at some point, maybe in Buenos Aires, who knows? And uh, otherwise sure uh, somewhere will. else, I'm but sure uh, it's a small tango world. So who knows? Uh, thank you for today. Yes. And uh, well, see you later. Thank you, Lucas. Bye.